What is going on YouTube? BCD here back with another video. Uh, today we're talking about the PlayStation 5 event that just wrapped September 16, 2020. So, to start off, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm not that impressed, but they did have some stuff in there that I really wanted to play and I thought was pretty cool. I just didn't like all of the, you know... They didn't, they didn't have much information on when these games was going to be launching or if it was going to be with the launch window. And a lot of the games they were showing didn't have a date. But we got a date for the console pre-orders at least. That is November 12th. Um, and that's for the U.S., uh, Canada, everything else like the 16th. But it's, it's a bunch of... You got to go look it up. But basically, <laughs> November 12th is a date when we're going to actually get to be able to purchase the PlayStation 5. The digital edition coming in at $399. Not bad, Sony. Not bad. And then we have the actual non-digital coming in at $499. I don't like that price. I wish it was $449 so they can edge out some, uh, Microsoft a little bit more, but $4.99 is totally fine. $3.99 is good as well, which is really giving me, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a digital edition, but honestly, I am think I'm going to stick with the actual full, flat out uh, PlayStation 5 um, non-digital edition. Now, there was some hints within that meeting that they're going to be doing weird stuff like, um, they're going to be having digital uh, first type of um, game drops. And they said that with Devil May Cry 5. Even though it's an older game, the special edition, it's going to be digital first and not physical. I hope that ain't a trend. I just hope that's just some one-off deal because it's like one of those special editions. I don't want to see that in the future. I don't want to see where, you know, digital is getting the game first before physical. I don't really like that. I don't feel like I'm paying a hundred dollars and then I'm I'm still stuck with buying it digital, even though I got a hundred I paid an extra hundred to get the physical ability to get a game physical. So didn't like that. They didn't have much of that. They just had that one game. So hopefully it's not the same. But let's just get into basically what they were showing. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 uh, didn't have a date on that, but it's showing to be a console exclusive for Sony as well. And it's going to be available on PC too. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 looked good. It looked kind of like, but I just hope it's not in the you know reminiscent of Final Fantasy 15. We all know how that went. I really didn't enjoy that game. I know the Square Enix boys, <laughs> Square Enix boys is people I do a podcast with, my friends Jalen and Josh. But um, I don't know if I don't know if that's going to even hit their marks for. Uh, for for enjoyability because they don't they enjoy a lot of those final fantasy games i don't know if they're gonna like this one but they might i mean they uh they did enjoy final fantasy to some degree so this might be something for them as well i'm not interested at all but i'm glad sony is getting more exclusive things as usual they're trying to cater to their audience and their audience do like exclusive stuff so good, good kudos to them spider-man looking amazing looking great um, can't, you can't do nothing better than Spider-Man, but then put a black person on it. So Miles Morales is definitely putting that, putting that extra, you know, spin on it. It's looking fun. It's looking enjoyable. So, uh, definitely something I was interested in. It looked it really good. Um, that was pretty much after Square Enix's Final Fantasy 16. Everything else that was shown in the, in the actual, uh, event was all captured on PlayStation 5. So that's really cool as well. Um, but yeah, man, Spider-Man look good. <laughs> Spider-Man look good. It like he got some crazy powers. Like he kind of going, he going nuts on them, but, uh, it looked it fun. Uh, but then they dropped that Harry Potter uh, and it was called Harry Potter. Uh, I think it was Hogwarts legacy. That's coming in 2021, but that, that looked like it was going to be good. It's luckily it wasn't a console exclusive. It didn't say anything like that. So it is coming to, it should come to Xbox and it should come to PC as well. So Hogwarts Legacy though, I think that is really one of those games that I'm going to play and I'm going to enjoy a lot. Um, I was even, <laughs> even when it was coming on, I was telling my wife about it because I'm just like, we enjoy that Harry Potter stuff. So that game looked tight. 
Uh, it was by Warner Brothers. It didn't have any Rocksteady. I thought it was going to be Rocksteady that was making it. It just said Warner Brothers. I'm not sure what was the, the actual uh, developer behind it, but it still looked really good. And then we had Call of Duty come through and give us some more of the, the blowy blowy up, uh, boom boom stuff. And they had like a freaking... <laughs> <laughs> they had a, a, a RC car uh, going faster than all types of, you know, Jeeps and stuff like that. And then blowing up, you know, airplanes, whatever, whatever fits your boat. It's fun, it's enjoyable. That's what they was giving us. Um, it looked really good as well. Um, but, it, of course, it's all on 1080p screen. And it's, it's coming through at a stream of 1080p. So, can't really tell. But it did look good for what I was seeing it on. And, um, yeah. All those games, like I said, every game that they showed, even the Harry Potter one, was running on PlayStation 5. So, all those games looked really good. Then we had the September 18th through the 20th. You know, Call of Duty Cold War is getting a actual um, alpha. So, you're going to be able to play the multiplayer alpha comes, you know, this weekend. So, that's pretty cool as well. It's exclusively to Sony. So he's paid out some big bucks for that to Activision. So it's going to be from the 18th to the 20th, you're going to be able to play Call of Duty Cold War. Uh, no problems there. Then they had Resident Evil uh, Village, and it was just a trailer. It really didn't show much um, outside of, you know, just more of what we already knew. Um, I think it has some background to Chris, and then I, I, I don't know, remember the lady that it, it flashed to. I'm not very familiar with Resident Evil, so it could have been some type of Easter egg, but I didn't know who it was. But it still said it was coming out in 2021, no launch date or anything like that. So it was really a update to something we had no updates on. I mean, it was there. It looked good to a degree, but yeah. Deathloop, one of my favorite games, delayed to Q2 of 2021. That game looked really, really cool. It, they show more about the story and what you kind of have to do in order to win. So you kind of have to go through different scenarios and try to get people into the same place in order for you to be able to kill everyone in the same loop. That game just looks creative and awesome in its own right. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm really mad that it got delayed. But hopefully, because it's delayed, it actually has a much better, you know, a much better gameplay, much better experience, and it's more optimized for what we're trying to do. It all it still looked good. I'm they're using like real crazy weapons. He was looking like a nail gun kind of deal. So game looks really good. You should go check out the trailer when you got some time. Uh then we had the Devil May Cry DLC, and it's just Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, and they were kind of showing Virgil's point of view. Um, but really I don't know why they put that on the stage. Maybe they didn't have anything else, but that was something that they put on stage, and that's when they dropped the bomb of available digitally uh, first, which sucks. But I didn't really get the date, but I know it's going to be available digitally first on the PlayStation 5. Then they show Odd World Soulstorm. You can skip right past that. Matter of fact, no, if people out there that really enjoy Odd World, it still looked like Odd World. I don't never play the game for Odd World, but that's something that they had on stage as well. So they did give it time as if it was one of the bigger ones, but they did give it time. So be on the lookout for that. <laughs> then they did a Five Night at Freddy uh, reveal. I'm not sure what the game is, but it looked like it had some really good ray tracing in it. <laughs> didn't have a date. It didn't have anything outside of... Friday Night at Freddy, and there's lady talking over the mic, talking to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call his name Georgie, I'm thinking of it, but I'm pretty sure it was something along those lines, a Gregory or something like that, but it really didn't have anything else in it, but Friday Night at Freddy is pretty huge to a lot of people, not to me, but um, that is something that they also have, it didn't show as if it was exclusive or anything, it just showed that it was coming to the system. Then we had that Demon Souls gameplay. The Demon Souls gameplay actually did look good. And then I started talking to my friend about it in regards to why the animation seemed like they were heavy on the, on the animations and whether or not that was similar to the previous one. He did say it was similar. And then we were talking about um, why is he one hitting everything? And he was talking about that's just a you know tutorial stage, so he does one hit everything. And I couldn't figure out why they hid the HUD. It was just a weird showing. 
but it definitely looked it really good. So as long as it looked good and it plays good, I'm fine with it. Um, I never played Demon Souls, but I do play a lot of the Souls games, so that could be something that I add to my repertoire. And it did look like it, you know, they did some really significant improvements to it. So hopefully they're not super heavy on the animations. I don't like that being pulled out of the world to do all these stabbing animations and things like that, but it seemed interesting enough. Next, they did the PlayStation Collection. This is something new. This is where they actually take a bunch of their old PlayStation 4 games and they put it into a collection that's going to be bundled into PlayStation Plus as a new service. You don't have to pay additional for it. As long as you have PlayStation Plus, you're going to have this service where they give you a certain select amount of games. They had like Uncharted 4. They had God of War. They had Persona 5. It was like, a, it was like at least 10 select games in there. Where they showcase and like you know give to you for free as as a PlayStation Plus subscriber, kind of like Game Pass but on a very smaller scale, um, and it's only going to have backwards compatible like games like that, so it's not going to have more say. Well, at least it didn't show any PlayStation Five games, so it's, it just showed basically any older generation PS4 games that are pretty good anyway. So. Nice service. You can get these games for free. It's pretty cool just simply because um, I'm pretty sure PlayStation Plus is still going to be on the PS4. So you're going to be able to play those games as well. That's another pro for just owning a PS4 Pro. So, hey, power to you. Then we had the actual price reveal, which, again, I mean, I'm happy with the $399 price. I'm not happy with the $499 price for the non-digital I wish it was $449, but it's not bad. It's definitely a good competitive price. The Series X is $499 as well. I think the the Series X is a more powerful console and it has more storage. But I think the you know the Sony has its benefits of games in general. Like literally, I have to buy this because I want to play certain games on there. Versus the Xbox, I really don't have to buy it. I just enjoy the package of you know, all the stuff that comes along with it, but I don't have to buy that thing. I could buy a 3080 and be fine versus here. I need to buy this in order to play certain games. So you see the dilemma there. Uh, but yeah, 399 for the digital 499 non digital November 12th. I'm not sure when pre-orders start. Uh, probably should look that up. All right. So Jeff Neely just put out a tweet basically saying that there could be potential uh, that Sony basically stated that the pre-orders are going to go live tomorrow at select retailers. And then there may be some tonight that goes live and he's going to keep us posted. Like I said, <laughs> get you a council now. Go pre-order that thing. Don't wait. It's going to be sold out. But lastly, they did a little snippet of God of War. And they said Ragnarok is coming. So obviously they're going to be dealing with that more often than not. Obviously they were hinting towards it at the end anyway. When you find out he Loki and all that stuff. I think it's really, really cool. And I think that God of War is moving on to a different space of uh, creativity. And, um, you know, the, the ability to kind of expand on its world a lot more than what it could when it came to just, you know... Greek mythology. I think that's pretty cool. But they could always tie all that stuff back into it too. That's why it's so cool. I just really, really, really like it. I really like it. Um, but yeah, man. No gameplay. It was just a, you know him talking and saying being ready boy. And that was about it. But um, overall, I give this event a solid 5 out of 10. It wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. And the price didn't wild me. I wish it was $399, $299. That would have went crazy. I would have been like, take my money. But I get that they have the lead and they don't need to bow down or even become super competitive with them. They can earn their money back on the consoles or they can just, you know, break even. I'm just now more nervous about the scarcity of the console and whether or not they're going to have more digital than they are going to have non physical. I mean, or physical uh, edition. So, like I said, as soon as that pre-order stuff come up, I'm pretty sure you need you guys gonna need to go ahead and pre-order it. I don't don't lally gag around. I don't think it's gonna be that many out there. But honestly, they didn't show any games that really were coming 
during the launch window that I was interested in outside of Spider-Man. They didn't give any dates for anything, really. So, um, yeah. I'm not really sure when all of these games are coming out. It didn't come with a launch day. It just kept saying holiday 2020. So whenever holiday 2020 ends, which is December 31st, they can launch that game. So it's not something that that's going to be coming immediately that you need to go out and buy this console for. But you know the promise of games is there. And 2021 looks like a big year for the Sony. But overall, that's pretty much all I got for you. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like this commentary, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and as always, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.